A slow dance with a predator, an unusual octopus rescue, an ancient monster's comeback, a desperate kayaker's fight for life, and much more. Welcome to Smart Pizza. In this episode, you'll see the most insane encounters with sharks that were captured on camera. Well, before we get to the main part of the episode, I suggest that you take a look at a few frightening images that I found on the web. The first of them shows a young girl holding a huge and terrible nose of a shark with her fragile hand. As far as I understand, this is not a random tourist, but an Australian woman named Valerie Taylor. She's been called the most glamorous yet fearless shark hunter. Would you dare to take a similar picture? However, it's not always necessary to have a human for a frightening shot. In this situation, for example, divers accidentally captured a hungry and dangerous shark swimming straight towards the camera. Don't worry, no one was hurt as a result of this encounter. Exactly as in this case, in my opinion, it's even more amazing. Here we can see a giant shark washed ashore. This creature appeared so large that I once again believed in the existence of a megalodon. I have no idea if this shot is real, but if it's the case, it won't be long before we'll see updates to the records and adjustments to Earth's history as a whole. Thank you, my friend. These are the words that should have come out of the mouth of the octopus that was rendered aid. You'll be surprised now by another octopus that was not real. The living creature in this video sensed danger, namely approaching sharks. The only option that suited our guest as a bunker was this small pipe. Its main disadvantage was that it was open. Thus, the sharks could not only smell the octopus, but also see it and then even eat it. And that's where the human spy robot came to the rescue. The artificial octopus brought his live brother a lid that it gladly accepted as a gift. With it, the underwater inhabitants skillfully filled the hole and escaped from the predatory patrol. I think many of you were very surprised by this video. They didn't even think that octopuses are capable of such a thing. However, these clever creatures can do more than that. For example, as recent experiments have shown, they can escape from traps. That's another story I'll tell you about later. For now, let's take a look at what it looks like for a man who doesn't know he has a real shark on his hook. The man was excited about a big catch, put his paddle aside, and started hooking. But how much surprised he was when he saw a unique silhouette of the main predator of the underwater world through the water surface. At that moment, the man was about to throw the fishing rod overboard, only to be left unharmed. It was too late. The shark overturned the boat and wet the fisherman with it. The man immediately rushed towards another nearby boat and managed to reach it safely. He was very lucky that the shark didn't become aggressive. By the way, I'll tell you later why you should not be afraid of sharks, as many of us are used to. It's very interesting and important to know, so watch the video to the end. Here, by the way, is an example of what happens if a person isn't afraid of a shark. They would swirl in a fantastic underwater dance. Of course, it's all a joke. The man in the video is an experienced diver who plays with a familiar, almost tame shark. In real life, it's strictly forbidden to repeat such a thing. By the way, what do you think the predator feels at this moment? Does it enjoy this kind of entertainment? Maybe it's in confusion and doesn't know how to be. Write your opinion in the comments. Well, while you're writing, I'll show you what happens to inattentive tourists who jump into the water wherever they want. Despite the fact that there was a fence where these guys jumped, despite the fact that there was no one else there, they decided to show their courage and jump into the water. They managed to do it and, sort of, the first daredevil didn't even hit the rocks or the shallow bottom. But what the author of the video saw there surpassed all his expectations. As you've already guessed, the man encountered a real shark underwater. Not just any shark, but a great white. It's considered one of the largest predatory fish on the planet. Females are larger than males and, on average, grow to about 16 feet in length. According to most people, this is the most dangerous species of sharks for humans. It's great white sharks that are attributed to the overwhelming number of attacks on us. At the same time, there are only 3,500 of them. The fact is that because of a number of news reports and pictures taken with them, 
the price of the same white shark teeth, fin, or whatever has risen dramatically. The black market, alas, cannot be controlled. Hence, we have cases of poaching. In addition, many people just kill great white sharks because of their excessive aggressiveness. They say so that they do not suddenly attack, but few people know that things are different with other sharks. They show aggression solely because of the fact that people or any other creatures are in their territory. The second way a shark can attack is if it sees a new piece of equipment on the diver, something it's never seen before. Simply put, it attacks only for its own sake and to protect the place where it lives. If you don't interfere with this creature's natural processes, it'll be just like most other predators on the Earth. Don't forget to turn around. Yes, no matter how adequate sharks seem to you now, it's always worth keeping an eye on your surroundings. For example, these surfers in this video have been carefree, surfing the waves for the past hour and are completely lost. Well, not literally, of course. They forgot to keep an eye on what was around them and as a result let a real shark get critically close to them. To their great fortune, the predator was not hungry and it didn't hate the surfers either. The men's partner immediately shouted to them about the danger and they managed to get to land. However, it's not always a friend that's ready to help. Sometimes people can find themselves completely alone in the middle of the sea or ocean and the only creatures besides themselves is a hungry shark. The great white shark in this video heard strange noises and swam over. It turned out to be an inedible boat with several quite edible people on board. Obviously, the predator was quite experienced and it immediately proceeded to plan B. It began to bite the boat from different sides and do everything possible to make it go underwater. The good thing is that nowadays vehicles are strong and reliable enough to protect them from any predator, even such a dangerous one. The shark was unable to damage the engine, so the men started the boat and quickly got away before more hungry predators arrived to help. Ancient Monsters Comeback What kind of video do you think would have such a title? Maybe it's about a great white shark again? Or at least a whale shark? Well, no. Tourists from Norway filmed just a giant shark of an unknown species. Or rather, none of the scientists could definitely determine what species this monster belongs to. As strange as it may sound, but most people agree that it could be a megalodon. Of course, it's not easy to believe. All the evidence suggests that this shark was too big for modern predators. If you have your own theories on the subject, be sure to share them in the comments. Meanwhile, we're moving on. The shark in the next video is waiting for us. There, it's so eager to show its best side that it fights with the camera and at times even tries to bite it. Obviously, since we're watching this footage, it didn't succeed in doing so. However, it looked extremely dangerous. By the way, the shark in the video was a tiger shark and such restless behavior is considered extremely unusual for it. Many experienced divers seriously state that tiger sharks are one of the few sharks that people can dive with and not wear any additional protective equipment. They're very kind and calm towards us unless we behave too brazenly. In general, such behavior is often characteristic of large creatures and after all, the tiger shark is just one of them. It is, by the way, considered one of the largest modern sharks. On average, these fish grow to about 13 feet in length and weigh up to 1,300 pounds. When the shark reaches 6.5 feet in length, it will have transverse tiger-like stripes on its flanks, hence the species name. These stripes are said to be necessary for sharks to hide from their larger relatives. Yes, yes, this species is also characterized by cannibalism. In addition, tiger sharks are not squeamish about carrion and rubbish. The list of edible and inedible objects extracted from their stomachs is very large and includes even the remains of horses, goats, dogs, cats, rats, car tires, and much more. Tiger sharks are also quite highly socialized. They can often gather in a large group and start hunting birds together. People who observe this think that tiger sharks are extremely aggressive and will go to any lengths just to have a good hunt. However, it's not so. They use this style of hunting strictly because of their high intelligence. In normal life, as I said before, they're often more calm. Hunt 
Well, how can we do without it, provided that our video is dedicated to sharks? And as you understand, the hunt will not be on them, but on people. In this video, filmed in 2015, the shark showed tourists all its anger and thirst for blood. The fish swam to the iron cage, and it tried to break through it in various ways. It accelerated and hit the cage. It tried to bite the ladder. It pulled the rope, and it beat its tail. In general, it did everything it possibly could. Again, this shark may seem crazy. Imagine yourself in its shoes. Let's say you're hungry. You're sitting at home, and a small box of food appears right in front of you. But there's one thing. The box is closed. Of course, you'll try in every possible way to open it. You'll use a knife, scissors, some openers, or the power of your own hands. So the shark acted on the same principle. And in general, you know, having people in a cage can be seen as provocative, like tourists taunting a poor, hungry animal and getting an extreme experience out of it. The attack of the predator on this video, by the way, turned out to be unbelievable. You just look at the force and speed it developed to crash into the cage with its teeth. Of course, it had no chance of biting a human being. The cage had been specially designed so that the predator would not have enough freedom of movement. But even if I realized that fact, I wouldn't want to be in the tourist shoes. I think it's too scary to be in one of those things. What do you think? With a cage, at least tourists have a guarantee. A guarantee that the people upstairs will be able to lift them back to land in case of emergency. When the same fisherman finds himself one-on-one -on -one with a shark, right in the open sea, that's a different story. The man in this video was doing his favorite thing, fishing in a kayak, when suddenly his idol was broken by a hungry shark. It didn't show leniency to the uninvited guest and immediately decided to teach him a lesson. The shark made it clear that it's not worth hunting her potential prey. Good, the fisherman was not confused and began to deftly reflect the attacks of the underwater inhabitant. As soon as the shark swam up to the unstable kayak, the man hit it with his paddle, and he saw it off with a look. Such a dance lasted several minutes, and finally everything ended successfully. For the man, of course. Nevertheless, you'd better not go to sea or ocean on such an unreliable transport. There's always the risk that something will displease a much larger predator, and there's no way to escape by such blows. Turn around. I think it's exactly this word, in some language, understandable for sharks, that the diver said on the video. As a result, the predator really turned around and shocked all the viewers. People wondered, how is it possible? Why doesn't the shark attack? And I've told you many times today, despite the fact that sharks are predators, they're not as aggressive as they may seem. They almost always attack for a reason. Even so, it's never a bad idea to have some sort of safeguard, a harpoon, for example. The man in this video was diving and filming the amazing underwater world, but then a hungry and angry shark swam towards him. If it hadn't been for the harpoon in the hands of the man, the creature would have definitely tried to bite, or at least hit him with its tail. In this situation, the predator realized that anything could be expected from an unknown object in the hands of a man. Experts agree that most sharks realize when they're in danger and they do not risk the health for the sake of a small human being by their underwater standards. What can't be said about humans? By virtue of our generosity, we can do all sorts of things, sometimes even the craziest things. The divers in this story, for example, dared to put a small shark back in the water. It was clearly still full of energy and purely in theory, could easily have turned around and bitten a man in self-defense. Despite this, for some reason, people trusted their gut feelings. They switched off their heads and took this desperate step. As you can see, it paid off. The shark was saved, people's conscience was clear, and the author of the video had some amazing material on his hands. Underwater Looking at this video, many of you will not understand what I meant by this word. However, if you wait a bit and take a closer look at the footage, everything will immediately become clear. While the man was calmly swimming along the shore, a rather large white shark was circling right below him. Don't worry, the predator didn't attack the holidaymaker. However, this video still did not become less tense. I wonder how the swimmer himself reacted to this footage. Was he shocked? Did he dare to swim this route again? Somehow, I think it's unlikely. 
Now I'll tell you about the shark that the Titanoboa and even the Megalodon were afraid of. So what kind of shark would a Megalodon be afraid of? And is that even possible? After all, it was almost the top predator of its time. And if we're talking about sharks, it had no equal at all. Many people believe it, and it's very close to the truth. However, scientists think that Megalodon had at least one worthy opponent among the sharks. And what's interesting, that shark is still alive. It's a giant hammerhead shark. Yes, the one with the unusual appearance and unfurled eyes. Nowadays, they lead a solitary life. They actually hunt various crustaceans, cephalopods, bony and cartilaginous fish, including sharks. In the past, it was much the same. Hammerhead sharks appeared about 20 million years ago when megalodons were already swimming in the ocean. Scientists believe that at least the baby megalodons were afraid of these sharks. They have ampullae of Lorenzini on the underside of their snout, such special sensory organs responsible for electroreception. When a predator spotted a small megalodon, he would strike it with a hammerhead and knock it out instantly. The hammerhead shark could hunt differently, nail the megalodon to the bottom with a powerful blow of the head from above, pin the victim to the bottom and bite from both sides. This is how modern hammerhead sharks hunt rays. Most likely, such tactics would not have been very effective with adult megalodons. However, some scientists believe that these sharks hunted them just occasionally, but quite successfully. I'm sure Titanoboa would have been afraid of hammerhead sharks too if it had lived at the same time as them. At the same time, this creature had its own enemies, including this shark that's been recently modeled. Some scientists have speculated that at the time of both Titanoboa and Megalodon, an abnormally large shark lived that was unrivaled. According to one theory, it was even bigger than Megalodon. And if you think that's unrealistic, you'll never find sharks larger than Megalodon, then remember that the same Titanoboa was discovered only 15 years ago. Scientists believe they're close to finding a new and even larger species of predatory shark than the legendary Megalodon. There have been other creatures in history to rival Megalodon and Titanoboa, so I suggest that we talk about them as well. Let's not get away from the topic of sharks. The next character of the selection is the Ginsu shark. These monsters did not catch megalodons or titanoboa, but managed to live in the era of dinosaurs. They lived from 107 to 73 million years ago. Ginsu sharks were not as large as megalodons. In length, they reached 26 feet and weighed about 3.5 tons. At the same time, we should not think that all megalodons were abnormally large. Not all of them weighed 50 tons and reached 50 to 65 feet in length. Yes, the biggest of them were indeed such, whereas mostly megalodons were smaller. That's why Ginsu sharks could quite compete with them and even win. It's nothing to speak of Titanoboa, although the snake was longer in terms of its mass and was significantly inferior to these prehistoric sharks. In addition, one simple fact could prove that Ginsu sharks could defeat megalodons. At one time, they regularly defeated mosasaurs that were almost the main marine predators of the planet back then. The main tool of these sharks was their sharp teeth. They skillfully and aggressively used them and ended battles in their favor. It would seem, why did I say that the shark's main tool was its sharp teeth? Isn't that obvious? Can a shark wield something other than its teeth? It turns out it can. And this is confirmed by another prehistoric inhabitant called Xenocanthus. It resembles modern frilled sharks. In its turn, it looks more like a mixture of the European conger and the sea snake than a shark. This is understandable because the frilled shark is a living fossil. As a species, it's lived on the planet for tens of millions of years. But back to the Xenocanthus. Its main tool was not teeth, but a dorsal spike that grew from the back of the predator's head. Scientists believe the spike was poisonous and easily eliminated Xenocanthus' opponents. Apparently, this spike was intended for defense, especially to prevent sneak attacks from the back. Perhaps the Xenocanthus itself attacked with it. In the case of the Megalodon, this skittish and small shark could have dodged the giant's attack and jabbed it with a spike. The Xenocanthus itself is not yet well understood. It's not entirely clear how poisonous it was. However, in theory, 
it could have easily poisoned a megalodon or titanoboa with just one precise jab. Yet sharks are more accustomed to attacking their opponents with their jaws and teeth rather than some kind of spikes. The jaws of some of these sharks are astonishing. For example, the jaws of Adestus. This fish is also called the scissor tooth shark. Scientists believe that it wielded jaws like scissors and literally cut the opponent as easily as we cut paper. The Adestus was a large shark and it grew up to 40 feet in length. In other words, it was almost as big as neither Megalodon nor Titanoboa. These legendary creatures were very lucky that Adestus lived much earlier than them, about 330 to 280 million years ago. Otherwise, this creature would have definitely tested its scissors on both of them. Adestus could have inflicted serious wounds on the Titanoboa, whereas the bulky snake would have had a hard time to defend itself. In a battle with a megalodon, the scissor tooth shark could have simply cut off its fins. Predator would have lost all its strength very quickly. Or perhaps the Adestus would have simply accelerated and plunged its scissor jaws into the side of the megalodon without any chance of survival. Some scientists believe this unusual shark may have hunted this way. But it's not just the sharks that I've told you about that could have defeated Megalodon and Titanoboa. Other creatures were capable of it, and not just in theory, but in practice. For example, Leviathan Melvilli, one of the largest and most terrifying marine predators of all time, was certainly capable of it. Titanoboa was lucky. The Leviathan appeared after the snake had become extinct. However, the Megalodon shared the ocean with the Leviathan for some time. In fact, the Leviathan is the same modern sperm whale, only more dangerous and aggressive than its descendant. And this is finally the opponent that's not inferior to the Megalodon in terms of size. The creature surpasses it. At 60 feet long, the Leviathans weighed 50 tons, perhaps even more. But most importantly, they had much longer teeth if the largest teeth of Megalodons reached about 8 inches in length diagonally. The teeth of leviathans were 1.3 feet long. They didn't even look like teeth, that's how big they are. Of course, size is important, however, it's much more important to have intelligence. Unlike Megalodon, there was no problems with leviathan. After all, it's a whale, in other words, a mammal. So leviathan was intelligent, whereas Megalodon was not. Fish are not particularly intelligent. In this respect, leviathan had a big advantage. Unlike the Megalodon that ruthlessly attacked its victim, trying to end it as soon as possible, the huge prehistoric sperm whale skillfully waited for the moment, used tactics, and often completed battles with Megalodon in one bite. It didn't waste his efforts in vain. In addition, it developed echolocation. The creature could track Megalodon, swim unnoticed to him, and easily catch up from behind. Well, if it came to the usual fight, the ancient sperm whale simply rammed the megalodon and bit it, causing damage to it. The advantage in terms of tooth length made the leviathan a very dangerous opponent. I would even say the most important rival of the megalodon. The legendary shark was very afraid of this vicious whale and tried not to mess with it. It's hard to find another megalodon opponent that the shark would fear as much as the leviathan. However, there is one more. It's Zygophyseter, an extinct species of cetacean and another prehistoric sperm whale. It was not as large as Leviathan, about 23 feet long. Its teeth were not as long as those of its relatives, but they were not shorter than those of Megalodon, about 8 inches long. The strength of Zygophyseter lay in something else, its extreme ferocity. Many scientists believe he was more brutal than the Leviathan. For this, it's even unofficially called the killer sperm whale. In addition, Zygovicetter was more cunning and smarter than his older brother. However sly and clever the Leviathan might have been, it still relied on its large size. But the Zygovicetter did things differently. Scientists believe that it liked to arrange maneuvers, fooled predators, cleverly confused them and ambushed them. Megalodons were sluggish and slow enough and could not show any opposition to these creatures. So their impressive size was not so important. In addition, the Zygovicetter as well as Leviathan successfully used echolocation. 
It allowed them to navigate in space and not get into ambushes and traps, including those of megalodons. It turns out that it was almost unreal to attack the killer sperm whale unnoticed. In a direct collision, it outplayed the megalodon with its agility and then brutally dealt with it. I think it was even a stronger opponent for the legendary shark than the leviathan. What would happen if megalodon lived in our time? Many scientists believe that things would have been bad for megalodon. In their opinion, these sharks would not have been able to keep up with modern competition. Most likely, they would have been smashed by some other sea creatures that would have prevented them from becoming top predators. This would have included modern sperm whales. After all, it's logical to assume that if prehistoric sperm whales were so daring to cope with megalodons, then their modern descendants would do this as successfully as they did. In addition, modern sperm whales are not less than the same leviathans, and some individuals are even larger. They grow up to 65 feet in length and weigh 40 to 50 tons. Sperm whales are predatory whales that can easily deal with giant squid-like monsters, can catch any fish, and fight off any predator. What are we talking about if the sperm whale is almost the only sea creature that can fight off even the orca that many call the strongest modern predator of the planet? Megalodons could not have fought off this giant whale, and if it didn't want to fight or suddenly began to lose, it would have just sharply sunk to a great depth of up to one mile. Megalodons did not dive so deep. So under any circumstances, the shark would not have emerged victorious from the fight with the sperm whale. At most, it would have ended in a draw. I mentioned orcas here and said they're called the strongest modern predators on the planet. That's what a lot of people think, including me. Also, I generally think they're the strongest marine predator of all time, so orcas wouldn't even have felt a megalodon. Or at least they would have dealt with them without too much effort. I mean, think about it. An orca is the perfect predator. It's large in size, however, it's not huge like a sperm whale. This allows the orca to remain strong and sturdy, and at the same time mobile and agile. Secondly, orcas have one of the strongest bites of all time, and the strongest bite right now. They can easily carve up the carcass of a huge whale, not just any teeth will do for this victim. Thirdly, orcas are social creatures that live and hunt in groups. This distinguishes them from lone sharks. Together, they are a monstrous force that even the largest megalodon couldn't cope with. Finally, orcas are not only strong but also very smart hunters. During the battle, they use tactics and strategies, conduct reconnaissance of the area, assign roles for each participant in the battle, use echolocation to understand the location of each participant in the combat operation, and so on. Essentially, it's the underwater special forces. So the megalodon is just an armed but unprepared criminal without much of a plan of action. It's for all these reasons at once that the orcas could have left megalodons no chance if they had to fight. A group of orcas could have easily finished off a single megalodon. And even in a one-on-one -on -one battle, an orca would have had a high chance of winning because these killer whales could successfully stand against a small group of sharks. That speaks volumes. Okay, we've completely forgotten about the Titanoboa. What about comparing it with its theoretical opponent that this reptile would fear? I think the Dinosuchus is the largest and most dangerous crocodile of all time, taking into account that huge snakes and crocodiles or alligators organized battles in our time. Let's imagine that exactly the same battle was organized between the Titanoboa and the Dinosuchus. They lived in different eras, but still, who would win? My guess is that 99 out of 100 times, the Titanoboa wouldn't stand a chance. First of all, the Dinosuchus was not some modern-day caiman or even a saltwater crocodile. These giants grew up to 40 feet long and weighed over 8.5 tons. Turns out that in terms of length, they were about the same as Titanoboa, but weighed many times more. They were agile and cunning, skillfully tracked the prey, quickly attacked from ambush, all like modern crocodiles. Except that the bite size of Dinosuchus was much stronger. This creature has the most powerful bite in history. It exceeded 350,000 newtons. In comparison, 
that's three times more than even that of a megalodon. The Titanoboa had the only chance to try to wrap itself around the Dinosuchus, immobilize it, and strangle it. And given that modern scientists believe that Titanoboa did not hunt like modern boas or anacondas, the snake would have had virtually no chance of stopping the creepy crocodile. The thing is that those reptiles hunted like crocodiles, attacking from ambush rather than slowly wrapping around the victim. Nor would a megalodon. If a Dinosuchus and a megalodon were brought together in a battle, I'd bet on the prehistoric crocodile. Despite its bulky size, it was quite agile and fast, whereas many scientists believe that they were not distinguished by outstanding speed. Crocodiles would avoid the attacks of the opponent, even if the latter bit it, this would hardly be fatal for the crocodile because the Dinosuchus had very strong armor. In its turn, the Dinosuchus itself would use its record-breaking jaws, inflict terrifying bites, and exhaust the opponent. The Megalodon would still have a chance to drag the crocodile to greater depths, but the advantage would be still on the side of Dinosuchus. And that's about it. Write in the comments whom you consider the most dangerous opponent for Titanoboa and Megalodon. Leave a like and subscribe to this channel.